guest, and he's been here several times with us, and I'm just going to uh, welcome up Pastor Saul from Klaipeda, Lithuania. Good morning. Good morning. I'm very pleased to be here with you, and um, it is a true joy for me to be able to sing with you and to worship the Lord. I want to pass greetings to you from uh, uh, from my church uh, in Lithuania, Klaipeda. Is this me making this cool noise? Um, before I left, I was preaching last uh, two Sundays ago, and I said I would like to take some greetings to my brothers and sisters uh, on the other side. And so they all clapped out loud, and so uh, please receive the greetings. <laughs> I'm here with uh, two very uh, precious people, precious to me. It's Eist and Andrus, they're sitting right there. Uh, and their two kids are here as well. I thought that this morning uh, we could spend a little bit of time uh, slowing down and reflecting on the Lord. If we do not know ourselves, we cannot know God. If we don't slow down to become mindful of what goes on in our, in our side, in, in, inside of us, in our mind, in our heart, it is very hard for us to recognize what God is doing in our life. If we are not slow down enough to notice what goes on around us, how can we know the Lord? He cannot be known in a rush. He cannot be known in a lot of activity. Most of the time He is known in a very intimate conversation with Him. And I think that in the Western society, we are very fast. I think a hundred years ago, if you had something to do and you, it was on the other side of town, you got your horse and the buggy, it took a while to get there. And then you accomplished one thing. Today, you pull out the phone from your pocket and you accomplish three things. You can write an email, you can Facebook with someone, you can have a conversation, conversation on Skype with someone in Japan or in Europe or who knows where. It's incredible how much information we have available to us and, and how many ways to connect. But in all of that business, I think often we fail simply to look inward and to really slow down. Apostle Paul said, I want to know the Lord and I want to know the power of His resurrection. I also want to be a partaker of His sufferings. What a strange thing to ask. And so today I thought I could share or point you in the direction of slowing down. And perhaps one thing that could help all of us to reflect on our life and where we are in our faith journey is something that has been written by many writers over a couple of thousand years. Uh, Christians, our brothers and sisters who were seeking to know the Lord. And many have expressed that there are stages of faith when we go through this life. And unlike a child who grows without us maybe putting too much effort into that. First we feed the child when they are born, but then they kind of grow. They eat, they learn to eat by themselves and and they keep on growing. If they don't grow, something's wrong with that child. They have a disability and we are very, very concerned. I, sometimes I think we're not so concerned if we don't grow and if we don't see that growth in us and there might be a spiritual disability. So in the spiritual journey, it's not a given that you will automatically become a mature believer. There's actually a choice that you make. And many writers 
have done this thing where they say there are six uh, different uh, stages. Let's see if this works better. You'll see this on the screen in a minute. I'll just draw this so that I can point something to you. But six different stages of faith. And the first stage is just being aware, and I won't write everything, this will show up right there. <laughs> it's being aware of God, uh, a life-changing awareness. When a person encounters Christ and they know He's real, they know that He's alive, and the physical becomes just one part of life, the physical world that we live in, and you realize there's something more. And the second stage is learning or discipleship, where a person is very keen to read a lot and listen to messages, and you've experienced that. We are sitting actually here listening to me. That's part of discipleship, that's part of learning. And the next stage is usually activity, very active life with Christ. When a person learns, then they are encouraged often in evangelical churches, take a step, start giving, give and serve. And so we come to this place and this all probably makes sense to you. You've seen that in your life when you've been learning and you've served uh, in whatever capacity. But then there is one very interesting thing. It's this, the wall right here. Many writers say that people encounter this wall when we cannot go further on. And this wall is a place where we die to ourselves. When our ambitions and our passions die, it's not a very quick jump over the wall. It's actually the Lord that brings us to the wall. And it's some kind of trouble in our life. Often it's a crisis. It could be a fatal illness. It could be a loss of your child or your spouse. Betrayal in business. Bankruptcy. Losing health. Different things. But we come to this wall and it's a scary thing. Because this is the beginning of inward journey to the next stage. We cannot jump over that wall on our own. It is God that leaves us into this dark night of the soul. And that's where we are scared to go. Often it's our image of God that does not allow us to go into that place. For many evangelicals we believe that God is so great and He wants to bless us and He's shown that through His Son Jesus Christ. We know God is love and He loves us. And we think that the greatest thing we can inherit from Him is success in this life. No sickness, no illness, no, no, no doubts, everything's working, all the prayers are answered. But you've probably been in that place and I hope that many have, have traveled this inward journey when you, your prayers don't work anymore. When the church is disappointing, when you are disgusted with yourself and you recognize that you have these idols and demons inside of you that you cannot tame and you feel powerless and it's a scary place many people jump right back in and they say I feel so uncomfortable admitting that I'm so messed up that I don't have power I don't know the Lord my prayers are not answered and I have doubts I don't want to express them they go right back into activity and cover it up Let's do more. Let's save other people. Let's preach to other people that they need to be changed. That's sometimes the easiest thing to say. Anyone who's been married for some time, you know that. It's so easy to see how wrong your spouse is. And everybody knows, you know the best. But how hard it is to humble yourself and be asking for forgiveness of your spouse that you have not given her the time, attention, the honor, the respect, the listening ear. Oh, how hard it is to think that you're worse than your spouse. I struggle with that a lot. 
I come to a person, something turns inside of me and says, I'm better than that person, I think. I'm really cute. <laughs> or, I'm really smart. Oh, I pray more. Or, I've served in the church. Or, I became a foster parent and I take care of the kids. And that makes me better than someone. And the gospel tells me that's not true. The gospel tells me I'm a wretched sinner. I come to someone who lives a sinful life and I think I'm better than them. And woe to me, a hypocrite. I'm saved by grace and not my own strength and power, not because I'm cute or smart or who knows what. God saved me because I could not save myself. And I'm no better than any sinner in this city, my city, any country. And to come with that humble heart, it's usually a result of what we discover in this place. The next stage, when we go through that, we go back to active life. It's activity, but it's led by God. We are centered in Christ. And when we do, we do things where we don't even notice ourselves. It's a beautiful place to serve and not to think too much of yourself. We don't need recognition. We don't need to be noticed. We don't need a title. There's that freedom. We find more joy in being silent in the Lord than being active. And if someone asks us to be active, we can do activity. We can go back in leadership. But we find pleasure in the Lord. And the last stage is actually being in the love of God. Finding His perfect will. Finding what He wants of us. And being overwhelmed by His love. It's a place where the love of God uh, drives all fear away. It's the most blessed place when we desire God and not what He can give us and actually being mindful of Him. <clears throat> this place is scary for many. I don't think many people find strength to go through that. It's really admitting to yourself that you cannot continue on. And it's asking God, would you be with me in this dark night of the soul? That's where true maturity is. That's where true humility is born, often in pain. It is a place where we learn to humble ourselves. It is a place where we learn to wait. Remember Abraham received the promise, ended up waiting 25 years for son to be born. 25 years. At one point he got tired of waiting. So he made his own plan and had a son. <coughs> But then he continued waiting. Waiting is, is a big thing in the, in the Bible. We don't like waiting. I don't know about you. I, I don't like waiting. But I now learn to enjoy more and more waiting upon the Lord. Because sometimes he wants us to learn waiting and he does not give an answer. I think because he loves us so much and he knows that we will not be satisfied with what is his, but not him. That he sometimes waits to give us things so that we would not be too happy and run away. I got my success, I got my blessing, and I run away like a kid who has not learned to appreciate the parents' love. We treasure also in that place the mystery of God. St. Augustine said, if you understand, it is not God. We cannot understand God. We can know Him, but it is hard for us to know Him well. And it is in the waiting when God desires to reveal of Himself that we know Him. It's not enough through the power of our mind to enter into that place of learning. It is often in the silence of our heart when we listen and He speaks. And when we hear, it is with a great power. I would like all of us to spend a little time with the Lord right now. 
there is a, an old exercise, and I know you're going to be speaking soon about spiritual disciplines, and I think they're so important. But one of the disciplines is to learn to be mindful of God. It is very simple, I'll explain it and then we'll try to do it together. Um, it is when you stop in a day, and you can do it many times, it can take just a couple minutes. You stop and you think, Lord, when was I mindful of you? When did I see you last? Did I recognize you smiling through a child? or in the sunshine, or in the nature, with a still small voice speaking to me. And you reflect a little bit on that. When was it the last time that you were mindful of Him? Then you give thanks and you say, thank you for meeting me there. Thank you for showing me this. And then we go to the second part and we say, Lord, please show me how was my day or how was my week? Or how were these last two hours? Was I mindful of you? And when you recognize that you have gone without being mindful for a day, maybe a week, maybe even a couple months, busy with activity, even church activity, but not noticing Him, not hearing Him, it is time to say, I'm sorry Lord, I missed you. I was there in church, but I wasn't there. I was somewhere else. Let's spend a few minutes and I will lead us all to be with the Lord because I know how He loves us and how He wants to be with us and He wants that friendship to grow. He has beautiful things to say to us. Maybe even encourage us or rebuke us, correct us, but all with a loving hand. So would you please close your eyes. Father, would you show us when we were mindful of you this morning, this weekend, or this week? that you met us there. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are with us. Thank you for every time, Lord, when you speak to us, even in our pain, even when it's dark, and bring us joy true joy and nourishment for our soul. Thank you, Father. You know what to give to us. You know us so well. You know every thought that we have. And Holy Spirit, would you show us when we were not mindful of you, when we just rushed through the day, even this morning, when our eyes were focused on the material things, Sorry, Lord, for the times when I'm so full of myself, I can't even notice other people. I'm sorry, Lord, for not stopping and not noticing you. Forgive us all, Lord, that we rush through life sometimes. to be mindful of you. This we ask in your name. Amen. Let me, let me speak.
speak just a few more things um, practically. Um, I started doing these exercises a while back, and because um, my life is just as busy, we have five children at home, there's lots of things in the ministry, my mind is always racing, and I always find something to do. Before the project is finished, I'm on to the next one. And um, I realized that I can always go a few steps ahead of God. And one brother, Dennis, is here somewhere. I can't see him. But he sent a prayer. He was praying for me last year that I would always be three steps behind the Lord. I would never give more of myself than I have received from the Lord. And uh, as a family, we try to slow down. Every Saturday, it's kind of my Sabbath. I, for the last 10 years, I've been making pancakes for my kids. If there are no pancakes in the morning, it's a tragedy. <laughs> uh, I put on my favorite music, and um, sometimes I dance and make pancakes. Uh, on Saturday night, uh, my Dennis. <laughs> Saturday night, we, um, we watch movies. We celebrate together as a family. We give every child a bowl of the same candy so nobody fights. <laughs> we watch movies. We make our own pizza. And if there's no pizza that night, it's a tragedy. <laughs> we celebrate joyous things. Sometimes we go to the seaside and just slow down. I love dancing with my kids, that's one of my favorite things. I put on music and I dance and um, I have four girls and, and a boy. So there are lots of partners uh, to dance with. <laughs> um, but that slowing down, that celebration of Sabbath, is, um, I think it's very important for us Christians. I think that um, it, it would protect us if we were able to slow down enough where we do all the work. I mean, we have to prepare for Sabbath. That's the key. That's why I want to say that you have to prepare for your Sabbath to be free so that you celebrate. The Orthodox Jews always make love to their wife on the Sabbath. That's actually the only reason that a woman could, you know, free her husband from her husband duties and say, I'm not your wife anymore. If she does not make love, or if the husband does not make love to her on the Sabbath. A husband can let her go for any reason, but uh, a wife has uh, one card in her stack <laughs> that she can play. But it's a celebration. It's a joyous thing. And I think, as Christians, we've lost it. Sometimes we think, we think oh man, I can't do fun things, it's Sabbath, it's church. I can't wash my car, I'll do it in the garage. <laughs> I love washing my car. Uh, I, I love that, and it's part of the Sabbath. I can wash the car, I'm not under the law, I'm, I'm under the law of Christ. And so, the Sabbath is a joyous thing. And I think if we could plan that, if we could slow down, imagine how counter-cultural we would be. People would say, man, these people, they eat the best food on that day. On Sunday, this is the greatest day for them. That's an amazing thing. What a testimony it would be. But it would change us. The Jews that were persecuted for about 2,000 years, that's what they sang. We did not keep Sabbath. The Sabbath kept us. And it would keep us in line with the Lord if we were able to slow down. That's... My encouragement to all of us that we would be slow, take away things in our life to create space for the Lord. <coughs> would you try this for the rest of your life? <laughs> <laughs> Not just today. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, we thank you how good you are. You have given us Saturday and Sunday, often these are free days, which makes almost a hundred days a, a year, then we get the vacation. It's amazing that almost a third of the year we can actually celebrate and slow down. <coughs> but in our culture, Lord, you know how difficult it is, how many responsibilities we have. And so I pray for wisdom to slow down, to take things away from our life, 
that we could create space to meet you. That all idols would be laid aside and you would be number one. Just like my wife knows when she's number two or number three in my marriage, Lord, I want to learn that sensitivity when uh, you become number three or number four. I would go back up uh, and say, Lord, you are my number one. And so I pray for your presence in our families, with our wives, our children, grandchildren, that we would, slow, would be slow people and quick to know you. By your grace, in your name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Does anybody in this room need that message today? Yeah. <laughs>